Okay, so today I will talk about priority queues in our course data structures. We have already seen regular queues that uh, work in this FIFO manner first and first out. Uh, priority queues are totally different than that that regular ones. Uh, basically, they prioritize nodes and treat them based on the based on those values. For instance, in printers, the club sample printer can be prioritized based on their importance values. So, uh, not the <coughs> first and first out logic. Uh, and operating system, they also use priority queues. Uh, for instance, in CPU scheduling, uh, we uh, we in a computer we generally have one or a limited number of CPUs, central processing units, but we have many processes running at the same time. At a given time, however, I need to feed only one process to a CPU, and that should be chosen smartly. Then some priorities should come to picture, and uh, priority queue is used in an operating system as well. So uh, we will support insert to populate the priority queue. Also a build priority queue uh, that is similar, that is for the population, populating effect. And for the removal effect, we will have delete min or a similar function is find min. It doesn't delete it, but it uh, looks at the minimum element. So the find min, for instance, let's take that operation. If you want to implement it in a link list, you need to spend all n time in the worst case because you need to traverse the whole link list and uh, find the minimum explicitly. And in that case, the insertion for the link list will be very simple and in constant time because you just insert right after the head node. If you be more careful during the insertion phase and keep the list sorted, then the find min will be very fast, but again, then the insertion will be too expensive, being O N time. Binary search tree, let's focus on the balanced ones, like AVL tree we have studied. Uh, they do the insertion in log N time, as well as the find min in log N time. And the binary heap that we will use for implementing priority queues will support log N time insertion in the worst case, but the minimum finding will also will be O1 constant time, so it will be better than the BST in that sense. Yeah, so the binary heap is the classic method to implement the priority queues. And the term heap here is referred to a binary heap. There are also Turner heaps and etc. But binary heap is the uh, most common one, and it will be okay to implement the priority key efficiently. And to make a heap valid, I need to use two properties. I need to obey uh, the two properties, structure property and order property. Structure property comes from the fact that I will have a complete binary tree. Remember, binary tree is the one where every node has at most two children, right? Uh, and complete binary tree is the one where all the levels are completely filled except the last level which is filled from left to right. So we don't have a picture so let's draw one here quickly. So this is a complete binary tree right only one node. This is still complete because pre previous levels are fully populated and this level is missing stuff but from the right. So this is also complete. This is also complete. And this one, however, isn't complete because the last level has some missing guys and they are from the left, right? I didn't feel it from left to right, so I am missing these two. So if I do it, it will still be incomplete, but now it will be complete. Similarly, this will still be a complete binary tree. So let's do some upper bounds on the or some numbers, what is happening here, a complete binary tree of height h has 
between this many nodes and this many nodes. So to prove it quickly and intuitively, let's think about the complete binary tree of height h with maximum number of nodes. So I have one node at the first level, two nodes, two nodes here because every node gives birth to two children. Here, since it is fully populated, two nodes, each of them gives birth to two children, so two to the two, etc. So it goes like this. And I am talking about the maximum number of children, so every node level is fully populated, so don't look at the last level currently. So in this case, I have one from the first level, plus two from the second level, plus two to the two from the third level, etc. All the way up to what I will let you think about it to, to the power of in terms of h because h is my variable here to the power of h right and just let's just verify it quickly in this case h is height is two and remember height what is height height is the height of a tree is the length of the longest path from root to a leaf node. So in this case, uh, don't see this actually, I'm focusing on this. So in this case, any leaf is fine and the height is the number of edges on that path. On that path. So 1, 2 is the height. So if I had this node, then the height would have been 3, right? Because then that will be the longest path, 1, 2, 3. Anyway, so 2 to the 8, because in the last level, which is 8 equal to 2, I have 4 nodes. So this is the number I want to come up with, A. Let's call this A. Uh, but I want a closed formula for this, and I can drive it actually. What is 2A? If I ask you, uh, it is 2 times. So I'm basically multiplying above by 2, nothing cool happening here. Uh, so all the way up to 2 to the 8 plus 1, right? Because last title, 8 plus 1. Now the smart part comes. What is 2a minus a? The simplest question of the year. It is a, right? And a is the answer I am looking for. But if I do the calculation from the expanded part, a, so this cancels this, 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 this cancels this, this cancels this, and I end up with 2 to the 8 plus 1 minus 1. Don't forget that. So what I proved is a complete binary of height h has at most this many nodes. Okay, this is the maximum, and at least this many nodes. So why this is okay? Because uh, to make that height possible, only one node in the next level is okay. So I don't really have to fill all the nodes here, only one node. So I can divide the max number by two and scaling rid of this. But only one is uh, okay for me to survive that height. So what is the next one? The height of a complete binary tree is log n. So I have just shown you here that height the binary tree of height h has at most this many nodes. So this is the number of nodes. This is equal to n. Then, what is height in terms of n? I throw this to the right hand side. This becomes plus one, right? So to leave h alone, I take the log here. So it becomes log h something is equal to log n something. And I don't want to deal with little constants etc so i just show you that get rid of that uh, h is equal to all of you this is all i need for my complex analysis of the upcoming slides so this is the theoretical part in a sense uh, now be careful since i am i have this regularized complete binary tree, I can access my left client in one arithmetic operation plus 2i given index i the index of the left client is 2i, index of the right client is 2i plus 1 
And with that logic, you can also go to your parent. Parent of this is integer division 2i over 2 is i of integer division i. So let me just verify this with an example. So I don't know, uh, right child of index 4 is 9. 4 times 2 plus 1. Left child of 4 is 8. So I start indices from 1 to make this arithmetic. Okay. If you start indices from 0, then the left child will be 2i plus 1. And the right child will be 2i plus 2. So you will do additions in both cases. It is slightly inefficient. That's why you go with index 1 start. It is not really a big deal actually. Similarly, so the parent of 8 is 8 over 2, 4. Parent of i is d because 9 over 2 is for an integer division. Oh, now, as far as the order property goes, I have this thing going up. For every node, that node is smaller than its children if we are talking about the min. And if we are talking about the max heap, then for every node, that node is bigger than its children. So let's go with minimum heap. Okay. So this is minimum heap. So take any node like this. It is the minimum of these three. It is smaller than the children. And it holds for all the nodes. Here it doesn't hold. It holds for this node. It holds for this node, but for this node there is a problem. Because the children 6 is smaller than the parents. So it is not a heap. Let's implement a heap using only an array. So it is the cool part actually. I'm talking about complete binary tree three base stuff here but there won't be any pointer so you can implement this uh, very easily actually so what is the insertion code going to look like uh, if i want to insert 14 to the given minimum heap i put it to the last index okay La the first available index in, in other words let's put it here then move it up because then I may violate the order property. So 14 versus parent. Remember every node must be smaller than the parent, than, than the children. So now 13 is not smaller than the child, so there is a problem. Let's move 14 above and 31 below. Into the move. 31 below. Now 14 versus 21, there is a problem. 21 sinks down. So this is 21 now. And this is 14. And 14 is happy because the parent is already smaller than it. So, so this is the algorithm it leads. So if you look at the code, we already got this result. And the code of this is also super cool in my opinion. So the first part has nothing to do with insertion actually, it is about if your array is uh, out of size, you just resize it to a double size array, but it won't be an issue if you start with a big array in the beginning, so I, I, it is not important. Now let's go to our previous example. The size plus plus, so initially the size is 10, right? I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I make the size 11. So whole is initially 11. Now remember x, what is x? x is 14. So I, I try to insert 14. Now 14 is remember over 2 looks at your uh, parent 14 is smaller than 31 so come below what you do is that whole number this i will just put the parent to that hole so this becomes 31 31 and at this point you can realize that there's a double of it it is not a big deal and i didn't lose 14 because 14 is always in my life it is my ex now, but be careful what is happening when I come back to the for loop again, whole is whole over two, so whole becomes five. In other words, go to the parent. 
This is five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So I am now here. Is 14 less than the parent of this? Yes. So move down that parent 21 to the whole. So this is the 21 now. Again, there is a duplicate of 21s, but be careful. Uh, notice that 31, the duplicate is gone. It is not duplicated anymore. 21 is duplicated, however. Now, I, uh, when I come back, hall is this because hall is uh, 5 over 2, it is 2, integer division. Now, is 14 less than 13 because parent is 13? No. So, quit for loop and put in the hall, uh, which is this index, the value that I saved. To, uh, from the beginning, it is 14. So, with like four lines of code, literally, you can do this insertion. Delete minimum. In that case, so by the way, find minimum. What is find minimum? Remember, all this min heap is stored as an array in your implementation right so if i write this horizontally basically in my array this is the current configuration 13 14 16 is the third element so i won't write all of them obviously and the tenth element is 32 i guess and then 31 so this is my size is 11 so this is index 11 uh, so why did I do this? Because this is all array based. So if I want to find minimum, I just return array index one. Because this is what I keep in my code. Index one is 13. I just return 13. But now let's do delete minimum. So okay, I return 13, but I delete this. So what I do is I put the very last element, I get rid of this node, I put it here. Now the size is okay, size is 10, because it is gone, but there is a problem. This may ruin the uh, heap order property, so I need to move it down. Remember, in the insertion, I put it here and move it up, right, all the way up to here. So you can remember it like this, in insertion, you move up and deletion is like the opposite of it you move down because i put it here now i try to move it down in which direction should i move it down so i have children 14 and 16 if i move it here 16 will come here and then 16 will contradict with 14 so it's a bad thing to do why not just put the minimum of these above? It fixes the problem automatically. So 14 goes up and 31 below. Now move this down. Minimum is 19, so 19 here and 31 kindly moves below. And now minimum is 26. 26 goes up and slept with 31 and this will be your delete minimum so let's just verify 31 26 14 so 31 26 14 okay so it looks like i did it okay and the code is like this so remember the size was 11 so look at the 11th element and put it to the above put it above and size becomes 10 now so you kind of deallocate that place and then move down or they call it percolate down but I call it move down whatever so let's see the moving down remember I put this 31 here and make the size minus minus so size is down now now hole is one it's called uh, and I want to move it down so, 2i or 2 whole, if is it 
more if it is more than the sun is it means that i am at a leaf right so i am i have i am leaf because i don't even have a left cloud so i am uh, uh, at a leaf i don't even have a left cloud so i can't go further i quit okay so this is the stopping condition but if i have a left cloud then cloud is the left cloud okay so this is the child candle. Now I will also look at the right child. Be careful. So child is this, and child plus one is this. So is 16 smaller than 14? If yes, then child moves to that node. But this is not the case here, so I don't execute this statement. Now, child is 14. Is it smaller than temp? So remember, temp is my third one. It is going to save that number forever. Is 40 smaller than 31? Yes, so the whole will be duplicated with 40. And don't worry, I didn't lose 31 because it is in my temp forever. So, when I come back to the for loop, whole is child. So I have two clouds, but I have used this child. So this will be the whole. What is it? It is index 2. So whole is 2. Now do the same. Look at the left child of this and look at the right child so 21 is not less than 19 so don't do the right child don't execute this uh, so this is my child is 19 less than 31 yes so what you do is <clears throat> you move 19 up so 19 goes here by that statement whole remember whole was 2 so array 2 is that child 19. So 19 is duplicated now. Not that 14 is not duplicated anymore. And when I come back to my for loop, all this child, and that is the child I have used, this one. So all is this. So what is that number? 1, 2, 3, 4. It is 4. All is 4 now. Now look at left child. 65 and look at the right child be careful which is this so 65 is uh, sorry right child 26 is less than 65 yeah so true so move to that child so skip this and this is the child actually i will be interested in so is 26 less than 31 yes so what you do is to the hole, which is this hole, move this guy, 26 here, okay, and do nothing else. When I come back, I look at the left child of this, and when I come back, hole becomes this child, so this is the hole. So what is this ID? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. Hole is the 9 now. Hole is 9. Uh, yeah, and the left child doesn't exist. So when I go out of for loop, array 9 becomes temp, which is 31. So I kindly put 31 to this location. 31. That is the delete mean. We will keep. So the simplest way to do it, it is obviously call log and insert n times, right? Remember how does insert work? It's uh, it took log n time because uh, I forgot if I discussed this, but uh, insertion was about moving things down. So I, uh, sorry, moving things up. So I insert here and then I move it up. In the worst case, I move all the way up to the root. So and this this is basically height definition of height. It is log n or log n. Insertion takes log n time in the worst case. Deletion is the opposite. Yeah, I mentioned it here. It moves down. In the worst case, I move all the way to the down. So in this case, I moved in this road. And the height is log n. So delete and insert, they take log n time. I think it is very clear. So if you do log n n times, it will take n log n time. But I have a better moves for you. I can do it in on time using this code. I will use the move down, but I will move 
the nodes down starting from the second to last level. So I don't look at the last level, actually. I start from the second to last level and I start from the last node of it. I try to move it down, then this 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 down, and then this down. So basically, this code is doing that. Start from that node and I minus minus. Go off, like uh, in this manner, in this, do this zigzagging, my I minus minus, and do the move down. So, uh, I don't start from the last node because last level because there is nothing nowhere for this leaf to go because there there is no nothing below, right? That is logic actually. So 63. Remember minimum heap. I am talking about. It doesn't want to go down because it's the minimum of this tree. 45. It should go down actually. So 25 here. And 45 moves down. 12, it is happy. 20, not happy. Actually, it moves down and consequently moves uh, 17 up. Then, remember, I go zigzagging. I am here. 21, does it go down? No, because it's already smaller than the children. 47, yeah, it must go down. Pick the minimum. So 12, and actually, it will move one more step because 47 and 37. So 37 will go here. 30, uh, 37. So this should have been a 7 and 47. Where did I? Uh, where was I? I am here. And the next iteration, I am at this node. Should this go down? Yes, definitely. 92. So 12 will go up, 92 is here, now 17 will go up, okay, and 92 is here, and but I won't put it here because 92 and 20, 20 will go up, and it is already here from previous times, and 92 will go down. So. This is the result. Let's just quickly double click this. And so the answer of the slice 12, 17, 37, 55, etc. So 12, 17, 37, 55, etc. Yeah, so it looks like we did it okay. But what is the time complexity of this? Basically, I will give you a very intuitive proof here. Uh, what you do is you take the sum of highs of all the nodes. Why? So let's go back to the initial example. I start from here, I try to sink this down, right? So the height of this knot is one actually. So one from here, one from here, one from here, one from here. Then in the next level, I try to sink this down two levels in the worst case. So height of this knot plus this knot, and then this. Height of this node is 3, right? So 3 for this. So in other words, you can also count them. Height of these nodes are 0 anyway. So what you do is, your cost is the sum of the heights of the all nodes. The sum of the heights of the all nodes. So what is that number? I claim that it is this. And remember, h height is log n, so it is n minus log n minus something. It is on n. So is the idea is that but wh where did this weird number come from so I actually found a very cool proof, ab proof about this so let me just show you in a second so this is slightly out of the scope but uh, it can also open new horizons for you so basically remember the cost is this total right for the last level cost is 0. I have 8 of them, but I don't care. In this level, the cost is 1 because they are allowed to go 1 level, and I have 4 of them. Here, the cost is 2 because 2 is the height, the danger of the path, the potential of the path to be traversed, and I have 2 of them, etc. So what is this numerically? It is this equation, right? 
uh, j is the cost for the last level where I have 2 to the 8 nodes it is j so it is 0 times 2 to the 3 so 8 is 3 here right? 0 times 8 okay then j is 1 and I have half of the previous value 1 times 4 then j is 2 half of it 2 times 2 then j is 3 half of it 3 times 1 so this sum I can rewrite this because this is just minus j go to the goes to the denominator and I can also get rid of this because it doesn't depend on j so the answer is this 2 to the 8 times something okay so so far so good what the hell is this however so this now you need to remember a little geometric series from your calculus series it is that if x is less than 1 then sum of all the x powers will be equal to this uh, 1 over 1 minus x so now to make it look like my uh, problem I need to take the derivative of this so it is easy k goes to the front and k minus 1 in the exponent and then derivative of this is what 1 over 1 minus x again I have minus 1 becomes minus 2 etc so you should be able to do this derivation now uh, it doesn't quite like my case so let's get rid of this minus 1 by multiplying this by x and consecutive to this by x okay now it looks quite similar to the case that I have where x is 1 over 2 right you can just see that connection then feed 1 over 2 here and you will end up with the magical number 2 so the cost is 2 to the 8 times 2 in other words 2 to the 8 times well, is it 2 to the 8 times 2 so 2 to the 8 plus 1 now or let me write it like this it is even more clear like this 2 times 2 to the 8 and so let's remind remember what was 8 8 is log n right so log n uh, in the exponent 2 in the base so this is basically n and 2 is just a constant so this uh, number is really one wonderful idea you can build the heap in linear time let's do some applications now that we have set up our theory for the priority queues heap sort is uh, arguably the most famous example application of heaps basically you want to sort this array right this is the classical com computer science problem build the max heap out of it remember i will do a, a ascending sorting so max heap is the same logic every node is bigger than its children right? now and in this case for some reason uh, indices start from zero not one not a big deal so do a delete max okay so remember how does delete max work i get rid of this entry and i put it here 36 but now what happened so this is reserved right freed up sorry released so I can put this 97 here okay because it is the result it is the largest element I, I am saving my results here from right to left now I will do the move down because I have done a delete max so 36 how does it move down 59 goes up right well, this at this point I hope so now 36 is here 58 is better the bigger so 58 and I have a 36 here it's worth of course 36 now in this case I do yeah so actually the answer is here 59 58 36 I think okay now do do the same again delete max so get rid of this entry put it here and the trick is the following the deleted max element 59 will be used in that location 
see so I am accumulating result from right to left maximum second to maximum third to maximum etc of course then you will uh, move it down like I think it will go in this road etc yeah, so this is heap sort and heap sort is is what just happened here by the way I built heap in ON time and then I did delete max it is has cost log n and I need to do it n times n log n so this is the so this part dominates actually or n log n is the worst case time of heap sort which is theoretically better than quick sort because quick sort has the worst case complexity of O n square right remember and merge sort has the worst case complexity of n log n but merge sort uses an extra space so here I don't use an extra space I use this input array so theoretically heap sort is the best sorting algorithm literally uh, but in practice quick sort is faster than that because there are things that you can do to uh, avoid the uh, bad cases of quick sort so that quick sort uh, runs in n log n time so you alternate good and bad splits uh, etc and the partitioning the pivot choice they can be done all efficiently so uh, then the quick sort which also doesn't use an extra space turns out to be faster than heap sort so it is recommended but theoretically heap sort is the best sorting so we should also notice that and the code of it is actually build heap so two lines of code and then this map basically puts the maximum element to the uh, next element from the right side so, yeah and then moves it down yes so it is that let's do some data structure comparison binary heap is preferred for a priority queue because uh, we have used only arrays and arrays mean arrays mean uh, locality of reference so it is cache friendly it is faster that's why the uh, although the complexities of lo uh, insertion and deletion they are all log n in both bst and heap uh, the constants are expected to be smaller in the heap case so they are slightly faster but obviously building the heap is way faster than building the PST even the balanced ones the AVL3 the red black tree because we have the smart build heap uh, function here uh, there is no pointer space needed in heap uh, so it is way, way easier to implement but it is not the perfect solution sometimes BST is better like if you want to circle an element then it is only log n time in BST, but in binary heap there is no structure below the root, right? There is, a, oh, 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 sorry, there is a structure below the root, but it is not enough to find the elements. You need to look at uh, all the elements, so all n time needed versus all log n time of BST. Again, sorted order printing can be done in BST by an in order traversal, right? We studied that. But in binary heap, you need to uh, basically sort them up first, maybe with a heap sort, and then print it. So n log n required. Max and min, or floor and sale, both can be found in log n time in BST. For the minimum, go to the leftmost. For the maximum, go to the rightmost. We know it actually. But in a priority queue in a min heap only the minimum can be found in constant time but the maximum will take o n time not log n time all right so these are the issues let's do more applications k largest element in an array first thing that comes to mind find max k times so o n k right and some trivial sorting algorithms are already doing that doing that so just break them early or do a real 
uh, more sophisticated sorting algorithm and sort everything and then select the first k so it takes n log n time I have a linear time solution but it is quite complicated in terms of coding etc there is this quick select function that returns you the k largest not the k largest but k largest element in on time okay so if you put that element as a pivot and call the partitioning algorithm of quick sort another complicated algorithm to implement so remember the quick sort logic everything less than p is in the left of p in an unsorted way and everything larger than pivot p is at the right of p in an unsorted way so since this p is the k largest element found efficiently the partitioning algorithm takes o n time we know it from that chapter so i have the k elements here in my hand in just o n time but i don't personally like the solution because of the complex involved in the coding I will prefer this solution actually. Uh, build a maxib for the largest elements of k nodes, okay? Sorry, large of n nodes, so you need o n time for the build, and then do delete max k times, so it will give you the k largest. So n plus k log n. Now I will show you a be better, more efficient algorithm, like k plus so when k is large this is an n log n algorithm but this will still be when k is large it is like a linear time algorithm you don't have any n log n issue etc so but how does it work so let me go over to an example so if my input set is like four five uh, seven i don't know it's two and three, five, etc. So let's let's clear that this way. Uh, so k is three, maybe the largest three will be seven, ten, twelve, right? Yeah. And how do I find it? So I will build a min heap of k elements. So what the hell? Why the hell am I doing that? So the f min heap of the first three will be this, right? For five, seven now comes the smart part so two now for compare each element of the rest with the minimum with the root and then do the action so what is going on here the next element is two compare it with four so what is this telling you intuitively two so four is the minimum of this set right by definition the same in here so two is not even bigger than the minimum of these three so then it doesn't deserve to be in this result set in the end this will be my result set but then next element 10 is bigger than some element of these three in particular the smallest one so this guy doesn't deserve to be in here anymore 10 comes here and you do uh, move down so I mean he looks like this right 5 10 and so yes uh, then three comes three is not even bigger than the minimum of these three so it doesn't deserve to be in the result set i skip it and 12 comes 12 is bigger than this so 12 comes here and then you do your hippify i think seven goes up 12 goes down but it is not that important so in the end I have 7, 10 and 12 in my hand as the result. So build heap of size k, ok. And I will do move down log k operation and minus k times. One. Check if given array is min heap. So this must be like recursion I guess. Yeah. So recursively check if left cloud is a min heap or not. And if it is, then continue. If right child is min heap or not, if both of them are okay, then I have a min heap in my hand. So, if you are at a leaf node, you are already a heap, min heap, because one node 
it's simple to test it is already okay if now uh, I am this node I look at the left node remember index 0 so 2i plus 1 is the left node if the node is smaller than the left child so it is a good news it looks like I am doing okay but I need to be sure so go to that left child and recursively check that part as well what if the other case I am at this node 5 and my left child is 2 so 5 is not smaller than 2 so I, I am not a min heap I can't be a min heap so this is false I don't even call this later something happens here I don't care and in the end false and something return false convert max heap to min heap in linear time this is just a tricky question actually max heap is basically an array right it is just a specially formatted array but it's an array convert an array to a min heap in orient time I can do it with a real heap function so this is a trick question actually merge m sorted lists of n elements in the end so simplest way to do it is concatenate all these guys right I have n elements then run a quick sort in n log n time or heap sort whatever uh, n log n time but I can do it in n log m time how built a min heap of size m with the first element remember these are sorted so I have 10 15 27 and 32 in my hand now delete min and print this so this is the result set print so this is done 10 is okay and when I get rid of 10 I put the next element from the tens list uh, the list where 10 belongs to and put it here 20 and do your move down so I will have I think 15 goes up yeah so 20 goes down here uh, and in the next iteration delete mean result set put it to your result set print it or whatever uh, and put not 30 but 25 because 15 has belonged to, to the second list so put 25 here and then do your moving down etc so what happens I am I have done the move down on an m size heap so log n and I do it n times after each step so I do it n times I have done it only two times in this example but I need to do it n times all the way further down stack using a maxi so remember stack is a lifo thing last in first out uh, so if you attach uh, the timestamp of each node like this node is it is called C letter C but the time of insertion is one right? then this node K is inserted the timestamp is two I read this times from the computer clock or something then e is coming timestamp is three basically what I do is I uh, when I push instead of pushing it to a step I insert it to a max it based on the keys here not the uh, letters but the keys so what happens e the last in stays in the top of the max it. so to pop it out I need to call delete max so bad news is push is now log n time because I am inserting to a heap. Pop is now log n time because I am deleting max from a heap. In a regular implementation like of a stack with an array or a pointer, uh, it takes all one time and all one time. Right? So this is a terrible idea. It's a fantasy question. You shouldn't do it. This is just a practice. And Q using a min heap is exactly the same idea except that I have this FIFO behavior now right Oops, so what is happening uh, uh, FIFO behavior now 
so uh, basically with every value I also uh, insert the timestamp to a minimum so when uh, what happened there I think I first inserted C C with time 1 C dot 1 and then K dot 2 and then E dot 3 I guess uh, so what happens is I insert these values to a min heap now so C will be at the root automatically and I will call delete min because FIFO first in first out C must be in the queue in the queue and again times will be so this is wrong uh, NQ will be log n time again with a regular array based queue implementation it is all one and the queue of the queue again it is all one with a regular array based implementation but with this weird heap based implementation it is log n time so it is not recommended this is just a fantasy question yeah. so with that I will stop thanks